He's one of Israel's leading authors, whose books have been translated into dozens of languages and who has won prestigious awards over his long career. Meir Shalev often uses his sharp pen to critique Israeli politics, which he believes needs to hear more such criticism. Our culture correspondent, Meyer Margit, sat down with Shalev on the eve of Israel's 70th birthday to see what future he envisions for the Jewish state. I was born in the 48 war and I was a fighting soldier in the war of 1967. I was severely wounded at the end of 1967 and after a few months in a hospital I was dismissed from army service and I had a feeling that I joined the army of one Israel and I was dismissed from the army of a completely different Israel. You mentioned that the Six Day War in 1967 marked a major shift in Israeli history. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that shift means? The War of 1948 is the war which created Israel, which established Israel, which was the, the birth of Israel. And for me, the Six Day War in, is, is the destructive war for Israel. I think even for us, the, the, the winners of, of the, the victorious winners of uh, 1967, uh, it's a war of defeat in, in a way. I joined the army that, that asked me to, to defend Israel, as simple as that, and this is how I, I understood it. And I left to a country that wanted me to defend the holy places, the biblical stories, the uh, uh, things that, that never convinced me as a true casus belli. How would you say you view Israeli society and culture today? Are you more optimistic? Are you pessimistic? Where do you see Israel going in the future? There is a line which is going to, to some kind of self-destruction because uh, we will either become a non-democratic religious uh, state in which people like me will feel very uncomfortable or it will become an apartheid uh, uh, country in which uh, it will be about the same uh, population of Palestinian and, and, and Jewish uh, uh, population, but uh, one will not have the, the rights that the other one will have, or we will become a country in which the, the Palestinians or Arabs or Muslims will have a majority. And this is another kind of a country in which I will feel uncomfortable because uh, I don't see in this neighborhood even one democratic uh, Arabic state and uh, there is no reason to believe that if a Palestinian state, if this country will come in, in an Arabic majority country, there is no reason to assume it will be a democratic country. Years ago you wrote an article in the Israeli news site Yadiot Achronot where you said and I quote, Israel needs a freedom fighter that will free it from itself but among all its leaders such a man has yet to rise, original and daring enough. Um, do you still believe Israel has not yet had a great leader? We had one which was David Ben-Gurion, who, who was the first prime minister. Not only he was a very brave man who was able of, of making big decisions, but he was also a man of long vision. He, he was thinking about Israel 30 years from now, 50 years from now, and not only about Israel of tomorrow or this afternoon, which is the kind of thinking I see in in, in our own leadership today. But it's a very young state and we have to think about the character of this state. What, what do we want it to look like? What do we want it to behave like? In what fields we want this country to invest its, its, its money and energy and, 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 and ability? And I don't see a leader who give us some kind of, of a direction. My vision of, of Israel in the future has to do with education, with research, with culture, with traditional Jewish, I wouldn't say occupations, but fields of, of interest. My idea is that the Palestinians have to accept the results of 1948 and we have to give up the results of 1967, which means generally that there will be a Palestinian state uh, in the West Bank and Gaza Strip 
and uh, uh, the Israeli state will be in pre-67 borders. From Al Oneaba in Israel, Maya Margit, I-24 News. Her father was one of the iconic founders, generals, and politicians of Israel's first decade, Moshe Dayan, whose eye patch was world famous. Yael Dayan, his first child, went on to serve in the Israeli military, become a notable author and journalist, and later served in the Knesset, the Israeli parliament. We sat down with Yael Dayan for an interview in her Tel Aviv home, where despite her failing health, she is still a forceful voice for peace. We asked her, what was it like growing up as the daughter of a legendary Moshe Dayan? I was a child in uh, Nalal. We were a family of uh, farmers. We had a farm. And my father, like all the other boys, young men in, uh, in, the, in the country, volunteered uh, to participate in resistance, in underground uh, movements against the British mandate, and at the same time prepared for the inevitable war against the Arab uh, states. And uh, of course I remember, I remember his uh, absences, but it's not like a uh, father going to war in Vietnam or uh, in the uh, far away in the Falklands or in, uh, in uh, Indochina. Um, <coughs> it's, uh, it's, it comes back at night. He goes, he fights, he engages in battles. Um, he does his uh, uh, military activity, but uh, we still live in the same place. Yael Dayan became a journalist, author, and in 1992 was elected to the Knesset, the Israeli parliament, as a member of the Labour Party. We wondered if she feels she was destined to follow in the footsteps of her father, Moshe Dayan. I don't, you know, it's, it's not separable. Um, I've uh, inherited... We don't know what is genet genetic and what is uh, really education, but a lot from both my parents. And certainly I'm continuing in a certain path. Uh, they were born in Israel. I was born in Israel. My children, my grandchildren were four generations of Dayans and the people we married. And uh, he's still a dominating figure in our minds. But we all have our separate entities and uh, activities. Finally, we wanted to know what Yael Dayan's father, Moshe Dayan, would make of Israel today. He was not aware of the changes. I mean, we're talking now, it's uh, 36 years ago, he died. It's a different Israel. So I don't, you know, I cannot say what he would have thought of Israel today. But certainly, there are some. We are we are deteriorating. This Israel today is not the Israel, not even of my dreams, but certainly not of his dreams. And yet, I'm I'm not a pessimist. I mean, I'm sorry that uh, we are in such a, a not bottom, but uh, not in a good place. But I I believe that Israel with all its greatness and achievements, can pull out of it. We're in a moral crisis. We have corruption. We have, uh, uh, we have uh, the f uh, we are being uh, pushed into the position of a victim. But we're not a victim. We're a winner. This was just a small sample of the remarkable men and women who have contributed toward bringing Israel into its 70th year. As you heard, much was accomplished and much more remains to be done. But as former Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion once famously noted, in order to be a realist in Israel, you must believe in miracles. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kalev Ben-David for I-24 News.